It took me only a couple of months or so to learn how to measure an electric potential across a frog skin in a laboratory in Copenhagen. That was the easy part. In 1963, cholera was killing millions of people every year. The scientific goal at that point was not so much to develop a treatment, but just to understand what the mechanism was and to prove or disprove the prevailing theory that it had to do with poisoning of the sodium pump. It's not really a pump, but it's a biological transport mechanism in the human intestine that was able to absorb water and salts and put it back into the general circulation. Normally, the biological membrane was a frog skin. The tricky part was to adapt that system. I developed a method to use plastic tubing for a patient to swallow and to go all the way through the intestinal tract. But how did we know that we were actually getting an accurate measurement? I came across an article measuring the electric potential the same way I was trying to do. And they noticed that if they added a sugar inside the intestine, the electric potential would go way up. Oh, I saw that as a way to see if the system I had developed for the human intestine would work the same way. Well, by golly, it did. We added sugar to the solution, and the electric potential went way up. At that moment, Dr. Norbert Hirschhorn walked into the lab, and he said, well, that's great. If that works, it means that the sodium transport mechanism is working in the patient while the patient is having cholera. In other words, the sodium pump was not poison. And it means that we can use this for treatment. We can just have the patient drink a sugar salt solution. Let's do it. A few years later, Dr. David Nalen and Dr. Richard Cash developed a oral solution that could be administered in the rural villages of East Pakistan, and in fact, all around the world and save tens of millions of lives. But it would not have been done unless Sacker had reawakened the flame. The mythology says that there's a eureka moment, the breakthrough comes, and right away we have insulin to cure diabetes. That's not the way it happens. It isn't always a logical step from A to B to C pitfalls occur and things happen that turn everything upside down. I think the lesson here for policymakers is that just trying to understand fundamental mysteries of nature will ultimately translate into important applications. Serendipity is always there. <laughs> <laughs>